Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm Roger Shrum, and I happen to be, have the privilege of being the chair of the State Board for Technical and Comprehensive Education. Today, it's my honor to introduce a true supporter of South Carolina Technical College System, and that's Governor Henry McMaster. When talking about Governor McMaster, you can't describe him as just a supporter without putting the word true in front of it. He has supported our system in so many ways. He supported our workforce development initiatives, our economic development efforts, and championed our high demand technical programs while always singing our praises. Our 16 colleges educate and train over 134,000 South Carolinians each year. Our Ready SC program trained over 5,300 people last year for new and expanding companies in our state. Our Apprenticeship Carolina program had just over 42,000 employed apprentices across the state this year. The governor has had a hand in contributing to all of those numbers, both in his words and his actions. For years, he's been an advocate for the technical college system and our colleges, and he's a true supporter for what the system is working to do to accomplish for our state, which is creating great paying jobs for our citizens and a strong workforce for our business and industry in South Carolina. We're so happy to have him here today. And now let me introduce the governor of our great Palmetto State, Governor Henry McMaster. Thank you. Welcome, Thank Governor. You. Well, I'm very happy to be here, of course, and uh, happy that all of y'all are here. And I'll try to be quick since everybody's standing. <laughs> but uh, I do ha have some things to say. I start off, I remember uh, when Greenville didn't look quite like it does now. But with great leadership, I used to come up here and, and when uh, I was practicing, my father and I often would have cases in Greenville. We'd stay in this hotel. And uh, it was a beautiful hotel. And then sometime in the, in the 70s, it, it took a dive. And as you might remember, it's even condemned at one time. But boy, look at it now. <laughs> with, with just some good planning, good planning, a vision, and common sense, Greenville is now one of the top ranked cities and places to visit in the whole country. And of course, this, this very hotel is a part of that as well. So it just shows what you can do if, you, if you've got a good idea, you use common sense, and you emphasize the talent that you have at your disposal, you can make a glorious, glorious future. And that is what we're about here today with the prime mover being our technical college system. It's all common sense. I got a story I don't think I've told y'all about common sense, so I'll tell it now. <laughs> uh, there was a, there was a uh, fellow from the big city. He came into one of the small towns in South Carolina. He hadn't been there before. He didn't know his way around. He was going to a New Year's Eve party. And it was dark. It was raining. It was foggy. And as I say, he hadn't been there before. And he went into an intersection. Bam! Had a wreck. So he got out, and there was a truck there pickup truck. An old fella got out and the, the, the uh, visitor said, well, uh, I don't think this was my fault. And the driver, who probably was a farmer, says, well, I don't think it was my fault either. And the visitor says, well, I'm not hurt. I'm not hurt. How about you? He says, no, sir, I'm not, I'm not hurt. And the visitor said, well, since uh, it is New Year's Eve and uh, I was going to the party, uh, but since we're not hurt, I think maybe we ought to just celebrate right now. I've got a bottle of whiskey in the trunk. So he opened up his big fancy car, pulled it out, took a big old slug, and gave it to the farmer and said, here, you take a slug. He says, no, I think I'll wait till after the police get here. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't nothing but common sense. And that's, that's what we're doing here. This is common sense. Our state is booming. It is booming. We're right at the top of the list of all around the country. I go to meetings, national meetings from time to time, and people are, are excited and thrilled about what they see happening in South Carolina. We use common sense. We know that our people have talent, and it is our job to see that they are able to maximize their potential. And we have a, enormous cooperation, collaboration, and communication among our business community, among the public officials, among our research universities, among our communities. We have a great 
pro-business legislature. We're cutting taxes. We've just done that. We're actually going to have a, a billion dollar rebate. Things are going so well here. We usually have about a nine or, or ten billion dollar budget, something like that. We got a two billion dollar surplus this year. That's how good things are going. We've got people working now. We've got more people working than we've ever had working before. Our rainy day fund is is full, and it's because one reason because we did not close down. We used common sense. We kept going. We are booming other parts of the country. You read about it every day. They're in deep trouble. A lot of them shut down. They didn't need to, but they did. We didn't. But they, we have good, conservative, common sense policies, and that's what's made all the difference. I got to say, we've had to fight the present administration, the Biden administration, on some mandates. They were unconstitutional. They would re require things that the Constitution did not let them require, vaccine mandates and such. We relied on common sense. The Constitution, the court said, did not allow those invasive policies to take place. That has made a big difference. But ladies and gentlemen, we, are, we have the people, we have the assets, we have a magnificent port, we have two inland ports. There's not another state that has, has all of that. Well, as I mentioned, our research universities, we've got more brain power in South Carolina. We've got firms from all over the world that want to come here and have our people do their work for them. So it is our job to see that this enormous talent, this great talent pool that we have in our state is prepared and educated and ready to do the work. Uh, businesses of all kinds, enormous variety, from manufacturing to life sciences to others are looking to come here. So how, how do we do this? There are a lot of people that just do not have the money to go to school. And as we know, after World War II, everyone wanted to have a four-year college degree, and that's a good thing. But as we know now, the world has so changed, the opportunities, the technologies are so changed that the, the action, the real opportunity lies through the technical higher education system. Wilbur Ross, the former Commerce Secretary under President Trump, visited South Carolina many times. He said over and over, South Carolina has the best technical college system of any state in the country. And it's getting better, it's getting stronger. I send out a letter to the high school graduates we have the last few years saying, take a look at what's gonna happen when you graduate from high school. You might want to go straight to work. You might want to go to college. You might want to go to the military. But we include in there a pamphlet of one part of higher education, and that is our technical college system, which is second to none. But still, a lot of people today, as you know, they, they can't write a $400 check. They just don't have, don't have the money. They can't afford to go to school. But there are scholarships that are available, Pell grants and those kind of things. But in our state, We've taken yet another step. We have, I, I'm, and I'm here to announce, a $25 million investment in South Carolina's workforce scholarships for the future. It's from our GEAR funds. It's available, and it is, is coming, and that will supplement the $39 million that we got from the General Assembly earlier. So that totals up $64 million, 39 plus 25. Can you use it? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that's what we're doing today. And what we we do we're investing in our people, and we know that it produces results. Last year we put 12 million dollars in there, and that got certificates, or some degrees, but certificates and credentials for 5,000 people that either went from high school to tech or came back to tech after, after doing something else. And one story is about a couple that were working in, I think in, the, I don't know, I'm not sure where they're working, but she was making about uh, 14 and he was making a little more an hour. And they really didn't like those jobs, so they decided to take advantage of one of these scholarships. And they went to and, and got their commercial driver's license from the technical college. And right now they're operating as a team and being paid $140,000 a year. It's just like magic, and it's right here at our disposal. We got great people in a great place, and this is going to make our people in our state even stronger, 
for a very for a brighter future for, for all of us, for all our children and their children as well. So I want to thank these men and women that have worked so hard to see this happen. I thank the, those in the legislature for seeing the, seeing the wisdom of using the taxpayers' money for this purpose, and I want to thank the taxpayers for sending the money in. But uh, this is a great day for South Carolina, and it's getting better and better, and we're going to keep on doing it. So thank you. Any questions? Anybody want to say something? I'm Tim Hardy. I serve as president of the South Carolina Technical College System. The governor used the word investment, and while we're talking about millions of dollars and thousands of students across the state, I don't want it to get lost in the fact that we talk about these students one at a time. They all have their individual story of how they come to us and how they get success. But as a state, we've got members of the legislature here with us today. I appreciate the great relationship we have with both the House and the Senate and the fact that they do invest in the citizens of the state. The governor's announcement today of $25 million will change lives in the state of South Carolina. This will bring forth an opportunity for people to gain a skill, get a good job, and work here in the state of South Carolina. So that's what it means on an individual basis. I do want to thank the folks behind me. We've got several of our college presidents as well as the state board. These things only happen in a state where we're willing to work together and we're willing to partner. The governor, as Mr. Strom said, been a great partner for us, but it takes the legislature, it takes our county councils, our local governments, and all working together. But while we're talking about thousands of students and millions of dollars, I thought it was important to really take that to a place where it's not just a number. It's really a person's life. So I invited one of our presidents to come and give you a little bit of an idea of what that means like on an individual basis. Dr. Hope Rivers is our president at Piedmont Technical College, which covers a seven county area in the state. And I asked Dr. Rivers to come and speak to that a little bit if she would. All right, thank you. It is certainly my pleasure to tell the story of a student. Uh, we have a graduate from Piedmont Technical College who majored in machine tool uh, technology, Lynn Rogers. She's been working at ZF in Lawrence County full time for over a year. When Lynn was researching for a career change, a conversation that she had with the machine tool technology director, Mr. Philip Calhoun, led her to the computerized numerical control certificate program, also known as the CNC certificate program. Lynn admitted, she said, I, I don't know, I think this is crazy. I'm not sure that I can do this. I've never worked in manufacturing before. She was told by her instructor not to worry just to treat this like a CNC boot camp. Uh, when she learned uh, everything that she would need to know, well, she then learned everything that she would need to know about CNC and ZF transmission. Lynn's perspective on being afraid to make that change quickly altered. She says that from the moment that she went in to work at ZF, she knew that she had made the right decision. She was applying what she had learned in her classes, and she felt like she was ready for the job that she was taking. Lynn had, in fact, found her niche in machine tool. She had found a career in advanced manufacturing. But Lynn didn't do all of these things alone. She had the support of her family. She had the support of the Piedmont Technical College faculty and staff. And most importantly, she had the support of the state of South Carolina. Like many of our students, Lynn could not have pursued this change in her career had it not been for the Workforce Scholarships of the Future program. 
She utilized these things to make a drastic change for her family. This investment in South Carolina's technical colleges will help many students like Lynn. On behalf of the presidents of the 16 technical colleges around the state, we thank you. Our students, thank you. Thank, thank you. As I say, South Carolina, we, we are booming and we're going to keep booming. And I think we can be an example on how, how to do things right for people in other parts of the country that, that need a little guidance. We thank you for being here. Does anyone have a question? Okay, anybody got another joke we can? <laughs> we, we thank you for coming. I want to thank all of you and let's, let's keep it rolling. We, we're getting started uh, real good right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.